Good morning, everybody. This is Dee Reinhart with Illinois WorkNet. I've got Chelsea Jones on the line with me. And today we're going to talk about our resume builder tool with Illinois WorkNet. And we've got a couple poll questions, so if you want to take a moment to answer those, you can do that. Uh, if you need to dial in because you're having problems hearing on your computer speaker, that number is in the upper left-hand pod. You can chat with us in the middle left-hand pod, and you can download any handouts in the lower left pod. Please make sure that you do that with us. I'm going to hide our questions in just a moment. But I want to give you just a chance to answer those if you have not already. Today we are only talking about the resume portion of the Resume Builder tool. So if you have any questions about anything else, you can always send those to, and I'm going to type that in there, info at IllinoisWorkNet.com, IllinoisWorkNet.com. Uh, otherwise, please try and keep your chat to the topic of the webinar today, which is about the Resume Builder tool. So I'm going to move these questions here for a second so that I can access the screen share. I'm going to share my screen. And what I want to do, first of all, I want to show you how to access it. I'm going to do this at every webinar, so this is just a little bit of a repeat. And we're going to log in. So if you do not already have an Illinois WorkNet account, you can um, access a, an Illinois WorkNet account by just signing up. And all you have to do is put in an email address and some, some other basic information. We don't ask you for a whole lot of personal stuff. But that way you have access to all of the Illinois WorkNet tools. I'm going to log in. And all you have to do is go to this screen. Once you create your account, you will confirm your account. And then you will log in every time so that you can get back to your dashboard. And your dashboard is where anything that you bookmark or store or save, any of those items, you can access that from your dashboard. And to access the Resume Builder tool, you can get it from clicking on this Resumes right here in the top bar, or you can access it from My Dashboard and click on Resumes, or you can go to the Profile and get it from My Tools, which should pop up on the screen when it does pop up. Uh, oh, it went to my profile information. So my tools here, the resume builder is right here. So if you, you have three chances to get the resume tool. And we've got um, a redirect to the resume builder tool. And every time that you come here, the first time you come here, we covered that in our webinar that we had on Thursday last week. So if you missed that, you can watch that recording. But if you uh, have not already signed up, it will bring you to a page where you put in all of your demographic information, the kind of job you're looking for, all of that sort of stuff. And then once you're logged in and have all of your permanent information set up in there, it will open up to the Document Center. Last webinar, we talked about assessments. So if you did not see that, you may want to watch it. We do have videos on YouTube as well for all of these things. And then we have uh, what we're going to talk about today are resumes in this session. So we've got uh, demonstrations. You can save all kinds of, of resumes in your, in your tool, in your portfolio of resumes, and then you can create a new resume. So that's what we're going to start with today. And we're going to create a new resume. When we click on the Create New Resume, we're, we get this screen where we can name our resume. And I'm going to name this as IWN Demonstration. 
Now you have an option to upload a resume, but just remember that if you upload a resume, you cannot, you cannot edit it at all. It's just whatever it is that you upload. My suggestion to you is if it, you already have a resume created, you may want to have it open in Word, and then you can uh, copy and paste different things. I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger if that helps you at all to seeing. So now I'm going to click this Start Resume. When we get to the next screen, it gives you three options. You can start from scratch, which is great if you are a resume writer for a living. Uh, otherwise, it's just like writing one in Word. So my suggestion is to not use that one, especially if you're coming to the tool to look for some help about the resumes. The next one is browse the section sets. And this gives you just headers. Again, this isn't necessarily the best tool to use because it doesn't give you all of the descriptions that you might need. Now, if you've already worked with a professional resume writer, again, open up your uh, resume in Word and copy and paste things in here. And then you can always manipulate it down the line. We're going to look at the Browse Sample section because this in my opinion, is the best way to start working with a resume. So I'm going to click Continue. And here we have things that we can, well, you can also get back to the, these other sections above. But here what we have are the different categories of resumes that are already loaded into the resume tool. And as you can see, there's 540 different samples of resumes that you can personalize to your own needs. And this is, this is just great. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with a uh, manufacturing resume. So I'm going to pick that category. I get 10 samples out of that. And all of those 10 samples are all entry level. If you see the number behind here, that's how many different samples there are. All right, I decided that I don't really want manufacturing, that I would rather have the, manu the management because I'm not seeing the management level of manufacturing resumes that I might need. So here I have entry level of 15, I have 14 mid-career, and I have 23 experience. Now, if you're just starting out, or you maybe you've just changed career fields, you may want to start with that entry level. Now, I happen to be very experienced. I'm an old woman. So I get to potentially pick this experienced category. But for, today, for today's webinar, I'm going to pick an entry level one, just so that I can show you how to work with it better. Once I pick that entry level, you see that number 15 there. That then gives me 15 samples that I can look at. And what I can do is I can scroll through and take a peek at the preview screens here. And it shows me how the layout looks, what they've got set up where. If I decide that I, and then I've got a second page that I can go to as well. If I want to look at one of them in more detail, maybe it's construction managers here. I've got a couple of construction managers. Maybe I want to look at this distance learning coordinator because that's more of the skills that I'm portraying in my experiences. So I can take a look closer by just clicking on the word at the top. So I'm going to, I'm going to click on this distance learning coordinator. And I, I see name and address. I see a list with some bulleted items. I see education in here. I kind of like, I'm, I kind of like some of the words that are in here because they, that they are suggesting some of the things that I already do. So then I, oh, and I see some memberships down here at the bottom. So I like this example. If I don't like the example, I just X out of it over here on the right-hand side. But if I decide I want to use this, then I pick this use this sample. 
So I'm going to pick this one just so that we can save a little bit of time here. But you have all the time in the world to look at all of those different examples and pick what you want to use from any of them. Once you pick the sample, it comes to this new screen. And what it does is it puts in the information that you've entered into the system. Then um, it holds here with the distance learning administrator all of these different parts of the profile. And what you can do with this is you can uh, eliminate or change the section. So if I want to reorder these sections. So for my purpose, my education is a little bit older. Uh, this education here is newer. So they might want to promote that a little bit more readily than I would want to promote mine. But I, remember, I'm putting in my education. So I'm going to go over here to this right-hand side, and I'm going to reorder these sections. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this education, and I'm going to move it down. So then the professional experience shows up a little bit higher. So I'm going to apply this. And as you can see now, the professional experience shows up above the education. OK, the next thing that I want to do is if I want to change anything within the particular section, then I can click on that section, and it gives me the information at the top of what that section name is, then it gives me the text. And this is where you can copy and paste from your existing resumes if you want to do that. If you don't want to totally reinvent the wheel, then you can do that here. Now, much of this, please, 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 do not use these resumes verbatim, because this is somebody else's maybe even fake information. So what we want to do is we want to read through this. And maybe you weren't the assistant director. Maybe you were the associate director. Whoops, got to spell it right, folks. Associate director. And maybe. Um, Maybe this isn't one of the 20th. Uh, maybe you just take out all of this stuff and say, Associate Director of Distance Learning at a large local community college. And one of the things that you may want to do is eliminate many of these ad adjectives because adjectives are subjective. So if you just say a local uh, community college, that might be better. And then instead of saying large, you would say with a, uh, pop, a student population of uh, 7,000, then then you can go on and make any other changes that you want to make here. As you can see, they've included a table. Now, if you wanted to add more items to that table, you just hit Tab, and it takes you to another line. If you want to add a separate table, you can go up here to the table icon and say, I want to add three rows and four columns and it will put in a table with three rows and four columns. It's kind of hard to see here, but I've got uh, a word here. I tab, I type another word, I type another word, and I type another word. So you can see I've got four columns there. The other thing that you can do is if you want to add a bulleted list by clicking on the bulleted list. So I can type a word. And I am just not typing well today. Word word, um, my suggestion to you is put your skills, your keyword skills, in a bulleted list or in a column. And if I want to make this uh, table a bulleted list, but just have the table format be there, 
I can use the tools at the top and create those items because this is a WYSIWYG table or a section, WYSIWYG section here. And WYSIWYG is what you see is what you get. So you have the bold, italic, underline, cross-through, bullets, hyperlink, uh, dis disconnect the link. You can pick a color for your font. As you, as you already know, we already did the table. You can undo or redo things as well. So you can play with this almost any way that you want to. Make it look any form or fashion that you want to. My suggestion to you is keywords, 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 because when you're using an applicant, when a business is using an applicant tracking system, they're going to scan your resume for keywords that are associated with that job description that they posted. So please, make sure that you're using all of these tools here that you uh, can use for this project. Now, a couple of things that you may want to do. Maybe you just aren't getting the right words. Maybe you need an idea to spark something that you've already done in your career. So you click on the word examples, and it gives you examples of different aspects of a resume. So you can look for non-exempt or entry. You can look for experienced professionals, managers, executives. So all of these examples are here by type of job that you may have had. And it talks about achievements or activities, all of these additional trainings. So for example, I'm going to go into an employer. And I'm going to use the non-exempt entry. So as an administrative assistant, I can add a section. Perhaps at this distance learning administrator position, I also did some research assistant information stuff. So I can go in and add that. It tells me that it was added. I click OK. Maybe that's all I need to add right now. It just added all of those items right here. That might be a real easy way to add some additional ideas into your resume. Maybe it wasn't gold nanoparticles. Maybe it was uh, electric conductivity studies of, oh, where's my Sheldon when I need him, of, of atomic research. I'm just putting words in here right now just to show you that you can change. So all of that is available for you. You can use examples. You can replace things with it as well. One other thing that we always stress when we're suggesting resumes to people is the fact of using action verbs. We can look for all of these kind of different words and it will insert it at the point that your, that your cursor is. So if I want to highlight this word here and put in an organizational uh, action verb, then I can say add achieved. I can click OK, click out of that, and I can achieved uh, multi-level success with uh, 15 distance sites. Now, one thing that you do need to watch is how are you going to format. That's where your career navigator or your career resource center person or a trusted friend that's going to help you with this resume can help you through this. and. If you are working with a program, for example, a WIOA program or the EPIC program, or years ago we had the ADAM project, if you're working with a career navigator in one of those areas, they can help you through the process of the resume. And you can work on it at home, and they can see your activities. So this is a, a great tool. You write, and they can help you. And they can help you remotely. The last piece that I want to 
show you on here is this InfoBytes. And the InfoBytes is a really, oh, sorry, folks. It, this InfoBytes is a really cool tool because what it does is it lets you put in a little story. I'm going to add a little story about this job. And it might be an anecdote. One of the things that we talked about in the last webinar with the assessments is you can put anecdotes in for each of the different skills and assessments that you used. So what you might want to do is have two screens open and go back to your assessments and then copy and paste something in here. So if I'm going to put an anecdote in or an info bite about this, I might want to say um, Illinois WorkNet won a, got to spell it right, won a national award for their um, project dealing with advanced, accelerated, I want to say. And then this, the squiggly lines is a function of your browser. So if you don't have an automatic spell check, please make sure that you are doing spell check with this. So I can then save this or I can preview it. I want to preview it here and it's showing me the info byte shows up as a bubble here and I see what that info byte looks like. So that is a great tool where you can add additional information that w is available on the online version. So this is, this is where you can add anecdotes from your assessments into your resume. I'm going to save this section because we've covered all of the different portions of that. Then the other thing that you can do with the resume is you can uh, click in a section, and I don't want my address to show up on my resume anymore. So I take that out. I take out the city and state. I take out the zip code. I hit save. And now what it will do is I, I can add it back if I want to. But in most cases nowadays, if you're willing to travel, employers don't really necessarily need to know where you live until until they get to the point where they're going to hire you. Um, you might want to use some of this space to add your uh, LinkedIn profile if you want to do that instead. And that would show up in your profile in that space instead. So then you can also do a style, a, excuse me, do a style change, <coughs> excuse me, let me get a drink. You can do a style change on your resume because maybe you liked the sample and the words and the way it was laid out, but you don't like the look. So I go and I pick Descartes and I apply that and it just changed the entire look of my resume. See, it changed the font, it changed the layout, it changed the line at the top. I don't like that one, so I go back and I pick a different one. So let's just pick Emerson, apply that. I can move this and I can see what it looks like. Oh, I like that. I like that font, I like that look, so I'm going to stay with that. I can change the layout by the margins. Maybe I want a a smaller right and left margin instead of the, the inch all the way around. I can change the font. It depends on where people are reading it as to what font you might want to use. Um, basically, these are going to be uh, readable by AT automatic tracking system, ATS, uh, resumes, so depending on what you're actually doing, you may want to stay with a simple font. You can pick what your bullets look like, what your indents are going to look like. 
you can pick the lines that you want to use. Where do you want them? Um, you pick the different sections, and do you want different lines under different things? And then what do you want for your spacing? How much white space do you want on your resume? Now, like I said before, I'm old, so I've got a lot of stuff that I need to put on my resume. So I might want smaller spacing, where if you're new to the work world, you might want less spacing. I'm sorry, more spacing so that you have a little bit more white space. And one thing that I learned in design school is white space is your friend. So the more white space you can have, it makes it easier to read. People scan these days rather than reading directly. So if you, uh, if you can use bullets and, and columns, and all that stuff that we just talked about in that section, it makes it a whole lot easier. The other thing, you can set up spell check in here. It's going to automatically check your resume that you have typed. So even if you don't have the spell check set up in your browser window, it has spell check in the actual tool itself. And then you can also see the history of the changes that you made. This is. Uh, uh, just a great way for you to check to see, oh, did I really want to make, make that change or not? Then, now maybe there's another section that you want to add. It will ask you where you want to add a section. I want it before memberships. And I'm going to add a hybrid section. And on here it tells you what all the different sections are. Maybe I just want to add a, uh, a general section. I can select that. I can name it. And I can say organizations and affiliations. It even gives you suggestions of items from other resumes that are in the system. And so maybe I want to say Elgin Area Chamber of Commerce Ambassador Chair. And I want to say that's from 2015 to present. Then I can save that, and that just puts it in, in there. There are probably some similarities, similarities to Winway. Ricardo said that in there. Um, but one of the things that we do like about this tool is everything is all in one place. And this is just the resume section. There are so many other tools available, and they all work together. So that's, that's what we like about this tool so much. Now also on the right-hand side of the screen, there are these items. And I'm going to have to minimize my screen down a little bit so that you can see the whole thing. It gives you resume tips, resume samples. There's all kinds of, of things that you can read here. Um, section instructions, section examples, action verbs. It helps you explore careers on ONET. Now, if you haven't already, you can always go to Illinois WorkNet and look at our look at Illinois WorkNet's resume writing guide, where we have all of these same sort of articles and uh, help for you. Uh, so it just depends on whether you want to stay in Illinois WorkNet or move on. And as you can see, we've got guides, all sorts of guides here about how to do different things. And again, our YouTube channel is available for you. OK, so coming back to the Resume Builder, we have uh, different things across the top. And these pieces are available on all of the letter writing tools. And many of these <coughs> separate little pieces are available on each of the sections. So what you can do, one of the things that you may do, and we hope that you do, is personalize your resume for every job to which you are applying. And that may just mean 
re reorganizing your bullet points. So what you would want to do with this is you would want to clone your resume. So I'm going to clone this copy, and it's going to make a new copy for me. I, I save it, and I clone it. Now, what then I would do is go into that particular document and then rename it, and I would rename this. Uh, I would rename it for um, company XYZ application. And then I can save that, and then I can go back to my clone and save it as something else and make, make my changes, and then I've just quickly saved my resume and made a, a personalized copy for that particular job application. Resume GPS we're going to talk about in a future webinar on Thursday, so I'm not going to cover that too much, but it is a system that's available in the tool itself where you can put your resume out to the public. You can download the resume, and you can download it as Word compatible, a PDF, an HTML, or plain text. Plain text is what you want to use if you're sending something to an applicant tracking system. So remember that, because the, app, the ATS systems do not like uh, all of the formatting. So you would save it as plain text. You can share your resume. It gives you a link to this particular resume. So if you're sharing a link, remember to have the right resume open that you're going to use. You can see how it's going to look if you are going to print it. So if I go to the print preview, it shows me how it's going to appear on the paper. And right now, it looks like it takes up pretty close to two full sheets of paper. I would suggest that unless you are in academia and you've got all kinds of published articles, that you keep your resume to no more than those two pieces of paper. If you are just starting out, one piece of paper is sufficient. Then we have a to-do list. And our to-do list gives us, OK, what do I got to do yet? Maybe I've got to find out the name of my supervisor from a particular job. Or maybe I need to find out what the website address is from a particular job that, we, that I worked on. So you can add those items in here. And if I want to switch between resumes, what's useful about this is perhaps I found a word that I didn't use appropriately, but it was spelled right. I happen to have done that one time, and I do a lot of guerrilla marketing. And that means down and dirty, cheap, easy, quick. Um, and I had spelled it like the animal, but that's not how it's spelled in a resume. Now, I hope you're all laughing right now because, because. anyway. So maybe I discovered that I had that word in here wrong, and maybe seamlessly needs to be seamless. And so I find that. I can copy that. I can go to switch between resumes. I have to close my section first. I can switch between resumes and go to my um, the one that I just made here where it was my clone. And I can change that word because I can click into that section and find my seamless and paste it, save that. And I just changed both resumes. So you could work through that very easily and change all of your resumes, especially if they're the same basic format. So that is how to do a resume in a nutshell. What kind of questions do I have that I can answer for you? You can type those into the chat pod. 
Let me show you on here for the sections for the, with the date ranges, too. We have uh, a, a job title. We have a location. We have a date range. So for the work experience, because I was just showing you the, um, the basic top section that was automatically programmed. But here we also have in professional experience, where we have employer name, employer location, date range. You can also put in a URL for a resume. You can type in the section and change your font in that, just that section. So Ricardo asks, can resume be downloaded as Word document or another format? Yes, it can be downloaded. So up at the top here, let me save that section or let me click out of that section. Um, you can download here from the top. It's not letting me. Let me try getting back to the document center. What just happened here, folks? Well, we just locked up everybody. Here we go. Here we go. All right, so you can download as a Microsoft Word compatible, a PDF, an HTML, or plain text. So did that answer your question, Ricardo? Can you add photo of your work? Now, um, there is a section we're going to talk about in uh, this afternoon at 1 o'clock about a portfolio that you can create. That's where you would uh, add any photos of your work. So T. Kelly, I hope did that answer your question. Kim is asking, I work with students who are working to learn English. I like for them to write the resume in Spanish, but struggle to get to then get a good translation. How does this program work with Spanish speakers? Kim, we're going to have to investigate that one. I have not been asked a question about translating before. So I, um, Chelsea and I will make a note to find out, and we will let you know uh, in the post article that comes up uh, for this. We'll, we'll try to let you know in that. BJG says, can resume link be shortened? Uh, that is, um, if you, there are tools out there, there are programs out there that you can uh, get a short URL. The other, uh, you can use Bitly, you can use Owly, you can use all kinds of different programs. But the other thing, if you want to uh, put it in uh, an HTML, you can always highlight the word and um, put, click here. And especially if you're sending it by email, that will work for that. Um, Kim, we're going to have to check on the whole, can the program be translated into Spanish? It's a third party tool that we're using. So, and Chelsea just wrote, she's not seeing any translation options right now. Okay, anybody else? Oh, oh, here, Patricia says, how popular and effective is adding photos and video to a resume? Um, I would say that it's more, it, it's different products. Photos, if you are um, adding a portfolio, it's a separate piece. It's like a leave behind piece. Video is different. Video resume is a tool that we're going to talk about on one of our upcoming webinars. And it's available here in this product. And, but as far as a video to a resume, uh, it's, it's definitely going to be an addition where you might want to put a link in to your resume. And you can always add all of those sorts of things. All right, I see a couple people typing, so I'm waiting to see if they're typing to us. Plain text should be used 
when you know that an applicant tracking system is going to be the tool of choice for an employer, and usually they will tell you. So my suggestion would be is to create your resume, clone it, and then save the clone as ATS version. And that way you know you have a regular resume and an ATS version. And if you aren't sure, submit them both especially if you're submitting it to an online tool. Kim, downloading as a Word document and then using Microsoft Word to translate would give you a ballpark Spanish to English resume translation. Yes, true. Is ATS also plain text? ATS is what you would use for the plain text. Um, ATS is an applicant tracking system. That's what ATS stands for. And that's where you would want to use the plain text webinar. Thank you, Chelsea. All right, so if we don't, we'll keep reading the chat here, but if you could take a moment to uh, answer these questions, I would appreciate it. It's how we did on our webinar today. We'll be happy to answer any additional questions for you in the chat pod. We're only talking, Mirage, we're only talking about resumes right now. Is plain text recommended for downloading resume to Illinois WorkNet? Uh, Illinois WorkNet, we don't download resumes to Illinois WorkNet. Uh, Illinois WorkNet uses Indeed as a tool uh, so that it's part of our job search tool. Uh, if you're talking about uh, the IDES product, you can, I believe you can download a regular formatted resume or and or a PDF to the IDES product. All right, well I want to thank everybody for their attention today. You had some great questions. I love it when people ask those great questions because then we know that we're trying to help you a little bit better. And we have another webinar coming up at 1 o'clock, so please join us at 1 o'clock. And I'm going to end the recording now. Have a great rest of your day if I don't talk to you at 1. <laughs>